Hello and welcome to Information Technology Fundamentals where we're going to be talking about computing devices today. So we're going to describe how a computer processes data and the devices needed to do that. Uh, the functions and capabilities of the different types of, cap of computing devices. We'll look at PCs, workstations, uh, server, mobile devices, and even um, some home automation. So uh, let's begin by trying to define what information technology is. Uh, it's a system that processes, stores, and can transfer information between devices. It can store a whole lot of different things, including documents, spreadsheets, uh, pictures, videos. Uh, all of these different types of data can be represented as ones and zeros, as that is what the computer understands and processes. Uh, now they can also, uh, an IT system will also include uh, communication devices such as phones, uh, other programmable devices such as home automation fall into the category, even your, uh, your smart home thing uh, devices such as a thermostat is in fact a small computing device that is able to communicate with other things. So in the information age where we're at now, uh, all of this processing is uh, mission critical to businesses and industries. We can divide computers into a couple, uh, couple of categories of hardware and software. Uh, they're pretty easy to define uh, if we think about hardware as something that we can touch. It could be inside the case, so like a processor, but it still has a physical presence. And then we have peripheral devices such as keyboard and mice that we interact with uh, all the time. So hardware, anything we can touch. Software is what the computer uses uh, to perform its functions. Uh, there's two categories here, operating systems and applications. Neither of these things we can reach out and touch, but we do use them as they are uh, in, as we like to say, the cyberspace. So an operating system is different from an application. The operating system allows the application to interact with the hardware. So in fact, it is kind of the uh, center of the Oreo cookie. If we don't have an operating system on our device, uh, nothing's going to happen. And of course, the application or apps are the software that have the instructions on what, what we want the computer to do. And the last thing in this uh, little bit of category is, is called uh, user interfaces. So user interface, uh, there's two types, a graphical user interface, which is what we typically work with on our, uh, on our computers, where we're using the mouse or perhaps a touch screen and we're moving objects around on the screen. And then the other one is going to be the command line, frequently called CLI, which is text-based, where we're going to type commands on a line and have the computer carry them out. So what's, so what's happening under the hood of our computer? Well, the first thing we need to know uh, is that everything that's happening in the computer has to do with ones and zeros. So we're going to call that binary because there's only two choices, a one or a zero. Inside our CPU, we have these devices called transistors, which have different states and they can easily interact with ones or zeros. Before we had transistors, we had tubes, which performed some similar functions as well. So what happens is the CPU and the RAM memory work together. Your program is in the RAM memory, and the CPU will re re retrieve the instructions from the memory. It will process it based on those instructions, 
and perform some kind of action. It could be it uh, processes data so that you can render a picture so you can see something on the screen. It could send uh, information to the printer uh, or it could do a variety of other things including uh, utilize a network and send the information to another computer. But the user starts the whole process using the graphical user interface typically on a computer and by clicking uh, around it is sending information to the RAM and then to the CPU to work on it. When we talk about information systems, we really uh, also want to identify that there's three states of data on a computer. Uh, first of all, storage, so or stationary, which just means uh, the information that's stored on the hard disk, uh, or perhaps an optical disk or a flash drive. Um, but it is uh, stored in a way where it doesn't need electricity to be pers persistent. So we have data at rest or in storage. Then we have data that is in transit, which uh, in future certifications will concentrate on that a lot, but that is going to be our networking. So transferring information from one computer to another, and the other state of data is uh, being processed, which is where the CPU works on it. So our, our, our data has three states, processing, at rest, and moving in networks. And with that, we need to have some devices. So we've got input devices to work with our data. Um, typically, there'd be mice, keyboards, um, a camera would qualify, microphone, all those things are input into the system for processing. And then we have output. So output could be um, uh, onto the monitor is typically what we see, but it could go to uh, as far as sound, or we could be sending it outside of the computer entirely. A quick history of personal computers. Um, they've really been around since about the 80s. Before the 80s, we had very large computers, typically called mainframes. Um, you wouldn't have one person having one computer. You would have multiple people using the same computer. So when we talk about PCs, one of the things that changed is the one-to-one -one relationship of user to computer. So that began in the 80s. Uh, IBM uh, really started off with uh, uh, with many of the first uh, personal computers. Intel then began developing CPUs and Microsoft came on board with Windows and Apple of course came on board with its Macs. And then uh, around the turn of the century or late 90s we we got the internet and with that that really changed a lot of things and it made possible for all of our computers to talk to each other gave rise to uh, tablets and smartphones and now we can see it's bringing along something we call the internet of things a desktop or workstation computer is just a, a computer that really has its components um, uh, divided out. So it's typically what we see uh, in the classroom or at work where you have a tower, you have a separate monitor, you have separate speakers and separate keyboard and mouse. They're very popular in businesses. They're a little bit less expensive than a notebook computer, but they do also give the ability to easily modify and upgrade them when need be. Uh, in this category for workstations, we also now have a, a category called all-in-one PCs, uh, which are not meant to be transported like a laptop, but they're very similar in that everything maybe is all contained inside the uh, monitor case. Uh, so they're a little bit of a crossover between a workstation and a, a notebook computer. That would be an all-in-one PC. Servers, we hear a lot of talk about a server, but a server really looks just like a workstation, uh, but the big difference in a server is that it's the operating system that it uses. So on a desktop computer uh, or a workstation, typically you'd find Windows 10 at the moment, which would be considered a client. Uh, but a server is going to run uh, uh, server software such as Red Hat 
on Linux or Windows Server 2019 uh, or another variation of that. Uh, these servers uh, look the same, but typically they use much uh, more robust hardware. They have a lot more memory, uh, and they're built to a higher tolerance than your typical um, workstation. They can also be found in large clusters, in which case they'll be in a rack-mounted form factor, so they can be so you can house 15 or 20 in one rack in one small space. A laptop is what uh, most people use uh, for uh, to be portable right now. Uh, they're typically all self-contained, so the screen, the keyboard, the touchpad, the, uh, the uh, ports are all built in. Uh, they have uh, typically a, a outside power source and a battery, so they can be portable that way. Um, they're they're quite popular, and the price on them has come down considerably. They're only slightly more expensive anymore than a uh, comparable desktop. When we talk about vendors, one of the um, phrases that comes up for frequently is OEM, which means the original e equipment manufacturers. Um, there's quite a few of them around, uh, the popular ones, Dell, Hewitt Packard, Lenovo. Um, if we go to laptops, uh, Toshiba, Asus, and of course in both categories Apple has offerings. And we'll also see later there's something called a Chromebook, which is a uh, device that runs um, Google's Chrome OS on it. And for servers, we got Dell, HP, Lenovo, and several other manufacturers. Uh, smartphones and tablets. Probably most everyone has a smartphone or tablet or interacted with them. They are, um, of course, small. They have solid-state storage. They don't have moving parts. Every, almost all interaction is done via a touchscreen. They come in several different sizes. Listed in the here, we've got smartphone size, four and a half to five. They have this size called phablet, which I'm not really sure is um, all that popular anymore. And then we have tablets. And we'll also find these hybrid laptops and tablets where they are convertible. You open them one way, they're running an Android OS. You open them another way, they're running Windows as a full-blown tablet. Um, there's several vendors for these. Most of them um, you're probably familiar with. But uh, Apple and Samsung are definitely at the top of the list of vendors for those. There's a lot of talk right now about the Internet of Things and what it is. We see it around, uh, or we'll see a lot of examples of those devices. Just a quick rundown here. Um, IoT wireless devices that use, um, uh, besides Wi-Fi, they can also use Z-Wave, Zigbee, or Bluetooth. Uh, some examples would be thermostats, security systems, IP cameras, uh, your smart fridge, uh, and now they have smart ovens as well. Uh, streaming media devices, um, but what is the the definition of IoT? And we can uh, focus on a couple different things, but it's going to be a smart device that runs an operating system that is able to connect to a network and sh gather information and share information. Typically, they share information via a cloud connection to other devices. We'll see in the uh, near future that 5G is going to bring a bigger, uh, more things to IoT as it is especially has some uh, tenants in it, especially uh, designed for IoT, and we're going to see that in modern cars. Uh, they're going to be more connected than drones and medical devices as well. Uh, many of you are probably uh, familiar with gaming consoles. They, of course, are small computers that run proprietary operating system. Uh, there's a, a several different ones, uh, but I'm sure PlayStation and Xbox are the two most common uh, vendors for gaming consoles. Uh, and then there's also the handhelds, such as the Nintendo uh, 3DS Switch and the uh, Sony Vita. 
So in review, uh, you should be able to describe the basics of how a computer is processing data. And we want to be able to, to describe the functions of the different types of computing devices. You know, what is the difference between a PC and a server? What's the difference between a desktop and a, ta a tablet and a uh, notebook computer, uh, as well as IoT. This completes our review of common computing devices. Up next, we, the next video will cover using a workstation, including setting it up, some things about ergonomics and navigating in the OS. I'll see you there.